So the, the virus uh, was first found, as, you, as Dar mentioned, and you all, I think, probably know, in 1986. And it was in a patient with HIV, infection and a lymphoma. Now, I, I, I was uh, feeling confident of being able to make hypotheses that were going along pretty well. So I thought that the lymphomas that were occurring with frequency with HIV would involve another virus, much like EBV lymphomas, right? So that about a third of all the lymphomas at that time with HIV infection with this increased incidence were associated with this immortalizing herpes virus, EBV. Uh, and in general, you can say that with HIV infection, most of the tumors that develop are in association with another virus. A lot of people have associated this with simply immune suppression, failure of immune surveillance, my view of that is that that's not a right concept or all varieties of cancers would likely appear. But rather it's due to a change in immune function related to cytokine production and uh, this in turn was associated with increased expression of certain endogenous or frequently infecting viruses like papillomaviruses. So in HIV infection we have an increased incidence of cervical cancer, for instance anal cancer, genital cancer, associated with HPV. I saw one report that wants to make cervical cancer associated with herpes 6. We'll come back to it in just a second, uh, RNA. Um, we have increased liver cancer, HCV, uh, HBV. Uh, there had not been, interestingly enough, an increased incidence of adult T cell leukemia uh, with HIV infection. It's the Stranger left out, herpes 8, increased kappa C sarcoma, uh, body cavity lymphomas. So the exception is ATL, but the question is whether we really had enough statistics on that, and a very large study is being planned now in, in Brazil to really settle this. Lately, people with HIV infection die of cancer more than they die of anything else. So indirectly, HIV is a tumor virus. By indirect, I mean, and I come back to it later, and I think you got to address this at the meeting, this cell becomes infected, but that cell becomes malignant. So there's some indirect mechanism. Does this cell that's infected produce something, a viral protein, aberrant cytokines that lead to abnormal proliferation and ultimately transformation of a nearby cell? The, uh, the case uh, that you could argue in almost all the HIV-associated malignancies pretty strongly. So I was thinking that way when we we're studying this patient with lymphoma. I said, well, we're going to find another herpes virus. and It'll be immortalizing of B cells. So that the idea then, the third bullet on this was that HIV, what happened now? What did I do? The idea was, was that HIV leads to increase in some cancers, mainly by promoting more gene expression of other viruses or replication of the entire virus, which result in an increased cancer of cells that harbor those viruses. And lymphomas are one type of such cancer but EVV was present only in about a third. So I postulated in our group that we would find a new B-tropic herpes virus, which like EBV would promote B-cell immortalization, and that would be one step in the increased incidence of B-cell lymphomas. And that's frankly the reason I first misnamed this virus HBLV. Came from patient with B-cell lymphoma. We didn't study any tropism of the virus whatsoever at that time. And we thought, okay, it's, you know, we're right on target. And then, th as I said in the next bullet, there was lots, lots of irony in the subsequent development of this story. Uh, this was the first new human vi herpes virus, so Tony Epstein first made me aware of, in 25 years. Uh, Z. Berneman in our lab was working on another variant. We thought it was another variant of uh, 6A. But his molecular biology, as he was analyzing it, looked a little more different than then NISA reported the discovery of herpes virus 7. And uh, Z followed up uh, with confirmation and some molecular analysis. Um, and our early foray into this virus, as I told you, was related to lymphomas. We, we didn't go anywhere. And then a young postdoctoral fellow, he's now very old, joined our laboratory named Paolo Lusso. And Paolo showed early on that the virus was principally T cell tropic. So he said, oh my God, and I've called it HBLV. So I didn't know really what to do, so I called Bernie Reisman. And why did I call it HBLV? I want to tell you that we had a nomenclature agreement in retrovirology. 
the Pearl Spring Harbor uh, in 1983 that new human retroviruses would be named by number in order of their tropism, H, human, T, lymphotropic virus. So we changed the name of HTLV-1 from leukemia virus to lymphotropic, HTLV-1, HTLV-2, and that's why I used the name H HTLV-3 originally for HIV. That was a signed agreement, actually, an international signed agreement. But that changed later, as you know, to the fitting description of an immunodeficiency virus. So I really didn't know what to do. We called HBL because it was human. It targeted B cells, uh, and that's the way I did it. Human herpes virus, uh, B lymphotropic virus, along those lines. So when I called Bernie Reisman, he suggested just giving it a number. So I started to count. I can count up to six. One, two, three, four, five, and this was the sixth. So we made it human herpes virus six or HHV six. So that's uh, the background. In, in the, that early period, when we realized this was a herpes virus, it, in prior to publication, we called on this guy because he was right below us in Stu Aronson's lab, and he joined our group immediately and um, played A or the major role in uh, the work that was then carried out. So the irony, so you already know this, we first, we found it was chiefly T-tropic and gliotropic. Now these are with cell lines, but also we had some work at least in the lymphocytes, I can't remember with the neurological, uh, neuro cells, glial cells, if we ever did primary cells. But this is a point I think we'd all agree on, that when we study the tropism, we had better include primary cells. It's not easy. It's harder to get tissue. It's more difficult to do the experiments, but it's ultimately what we have to do to really define the tropism. There is no doubt that at least the strain that we had in, in our hands, primary T cells, it was T tropic, both for CD8 and CD4. I don't remember every other, if we looked at NK or anything else, I just don't remember. Yeah, we did, but I can't remember all the details. It never immortalized. It had more cytopathic effects, and it was clearly not what I was looking for. It was not directly involved in the patient's lymphoma, not found in the tumor cells at all, uh, or at least in any way that each of the tumor cells was carrying this like a clonal transformation, like HTLV-1 or other bona fide direct tumor-causing viruses. So interestingly enough, there are reports of herpes 6 involvement in lymphoma at this meeting. It's not the first time. I remember a friend of mine in Italy, Torelli, who reported a long time ago, maybe 10 years ago, at, I don't know if it was one of these meetings or a related meeting, that he thought he found a few lymphomas I don't recall if it was Hodgkin's or non-Hodgkin's lymphoma where he thought the sequences were actually integrated. So this was certainly controversial, really didn't go anywhere. I, I never heard of it again. I don't find any important follow-up on it. But that was a powerful um, argument for causation, a, cl a clonal integration in primary tissue. But these were rare lymphomas, and one wondered why nothing ever came of it. So my last point on the lymphoma is that, you know, very careful review is really mandatory, and that needs a discussion. To find this virus in association with a tumor is one thing, obviously, as passenger or just in infiltrating cells. How do you argue that it's playing a role if you don't find clonal integration? Is it an indirect role? Is it producing growth factors and other substances that augment proliferation of B cells that lead to the lymphoma? What is going to be the ar arguments? Uh, I don't see it in the abstracts. I did deliberately look last night, so I'm, I wonder. 